Welcome to Rough Drafts, how God writes his love in our stories, a podcast that explores the faith journeys of our friends and neighbors in Burns, Tennessee. Everyone has a story to tell. And in this podcast, we'll hear powerful and inspiring stories of how God works in the ordinary lives of people like you and me. Our stories are unfinished and perfectly imperfect. They are just rough drafts, a glimpse of what is to come because God is still at work, writing plot twists, introducing new characters, and bringing good even from the most challenging circumstances. Join us as we see what God is up to in our stories. Here's your host, Matthew Hyatt. Well, friends, thank you so much for joining us today for a really weird episode of Rough Drafts. This is either the best idea we've ever had or the worst, and you'll know in about an hour. Uh, today there is the the terrific trio, the the three musketeers, the the gurus of greatness, the council of charity, the like the this. mistresses of ministry, the uh, well, sorry, well uh, okay, <laughs> I don't know, know if exactly. I've ever been called that <laughs> before. <laughs> oh, you've been called some things close. So it's true. Uh, today. It's true. Uh, I have three of my good friends who do some of the coolest stuff that's going on in Dixon. I have Paul Pitney, uh, director at the YMCA of Dixon, the Young Men's Christian Association. Thank you. Uh, we have V. Margaret Cole. V. From Margaret. CareNet. Thank you. And the one, the only, Therene Bame from the Help Center. Woo! The Dixon County Help Center. No, it's just the Help Center. It's the Help Center above all Help Centers. <laughs> yes, it is. The platonic ideal of Help Centers. <laughs> So what I thought would be kind of fun today, uh, most of the time on these episodes, you've heard individual stories. You've heard, um, you know, you've heard Debbie Martin. You've heard Greer Henson. You've heard a lot of really cool people. Um, and, and these people are really cool people, too. They're already glaring at me. But each of them represents uh, one of just the neatest things going on in ministry in Dixon. Um, so I thought maybe if each of you wouldn't mind taking just a second kind of give us the 30-second view of what you do, what what you represent. I know we think everybody knows these things, but they don't all know these things. And then I wanted to hear uh, some of the God stories that you have run into in your work. So um, um, they're all looking, they're trying to avoid eye contact with who goes first, who goes first. Well, I nor I'll do it because I, I love She's the butterfly. I am the social butterfly. I am the, I am also the executive secretary of Paul and Renee. I love it. I'm the keeper of the calendar. I let them know where they need to be. Yeah, you yelled at Paul that he was late this morning. And we're very thankful for you. Yes, and I do not mind doing that. You do an awesome and amazing job. Thank you. Because I have an executive uh, secretary at CareNet, an administrative assistant. So she's really good about keeping all of us on, on track and in line. But CareNet's mission is very simple. We empower individuals to make an informed choice concerning their pregnancy and sexual health, and we are in partnership with the Christian community to dramatically reduce the number of lives lost to or harmed by abortion. That's it. That's what we do. So CareNet is the place that loves on moms. Mm -hmm. Dads. No, they hate dads. No, we love dads. Oh, my bad. I get those confused. <laughs> we love on moms, love on dads, love on babies, love on mm -hmm. families. A lot of educational outreach, a lot of support outreach, Ultrasounds, pregnancy tests, Lorita's upscale boutique. At thrift store prices. At thrift store prices. Yes. Um, you can almost hear the low budget TV commercial, can't <laughs> you? Sunday, Sunday, <laughs> Sunday. You know, thrift store prices, upscale boutique. Yeah, and Karen has been in operation since 1995. So a lot of people don't realize that we've been in operation that long. So it's great to be able to be a light for the community. We are faith based. We put Jesus first. We are permission-based in everything that we do. So we are able to love on mom and dad where they are and love them well. You really do. It's really cool. And I mean, I'm biased. I get to I get to serve with you on your board. I volunteered with you for a lot of years. But I mean, that doesn't mean you're my favorite. Paul and I have had some pretty magic moments too. So, you know. <laughs> And I cannot wait to hear about these magic moments. <laughs> well, I guess we should uh, let Paul go next. Oh, great. All right. Uh, yes, um, I'm Paul. And uh, Paul Pitney, and I'm the director of the YMCA in town, the Dixon County Family YMCA. And uh, 
a lot of people think of us as just a gym, but we do so much more uh, from our warming station in the winter to partnering with over a hundred other community organizations and nonprofits that utilize our facility for free, or we partner in programming like uh, coming up on the 20th with the Help Center, we have the big turkey giveaway. And uh, last year, how many turkeys were given away? Like 1,200, 1,300? Yes, I brought the actual number, but Margaret spilled coffee all over it. Oh. So, yes, it was right about 1,200. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know the actual number. But it's all Margaret's fault that you it, don't. It is. <laughs> it's all good. Um, but just, you know, scholarshipping families and youth for programs and um and to to come to the y and and just have a place to belong and you know a, a place of shelter um it's it's a lot for people to you know have their daily routines and uh it is um our mission statements to put christian principles into practice through programs that help people grow in spirit mind and body for all so um so good yeah. We're all kind of impressed. You just rattled that off like you'd said that before. Just once or twice. Just once or twice. I think all of us can. We go to sleep with our mission statement. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that's what, I mean, this group around the table, are. our jobs are our ministries. <clears throat> and so it's, you know, it's so much more than a job. It It, it is ministry and it is uh, in our lives and through our lives. And, and that's why... Um, we meet every week to pray with each other and to talk pray about... on each other. <laughs> pray. Yeah, uh, we prayer. do. We yeah. We um, we talk about what's going on in the community, what's going on in our organizations, how we can better support each other, how we can better support the community, um, and that's how a lot of our some of our big community programs have birthed mm -hmm. through around a coffee table. So. Right. Um, yeah, I'm very thankful to be in Dixon and in partnership and ministry with these wonderful people. And so, yeah. And I love that we don't only work professionally together, but we're friends. Yeah. You know, I do consider Paul my little brother. Mm. But he's older than you. No, he's, no, not. he's the baby. The oldest. Yeah, I'm the oldest at happen. this table right now. <laughs> Can't you tell she keeps us all in line? Yes. No comment. You would think I was the oldest sister. In my my life growing up, but no, I was the baby of the family. You know, one of the things I like that you just said, Paul, is the ministries that you guys do. And I think sometimes people haven't appreciated the partnership that you need to get this stuff done. I think sometimes churches have even been a little bit jealous or inclined to reinvent the wheel unnecessarily. But Margaret at CareNet, um, I, I can do everything right, which I don't, but but hypothetically imagine that I did. And if a young lady finds that she's pregnant and she wasn't planning on it, she's in high school, whatever it is, um, it is really hard for her to come to the church. Right. I want to be the sort of church she can come to. But even if we have really done that right, it's going to be hard. And she can walk into Margaret's doors and she knows that Margaret's going to be a place where she's going to get, I'm not giving her an ultrasound. I mean, right. I start giving people ultrasound at the church. You can see me on Dateline, you know, <laughs> um, but you guys are, you're able to do something we can't and we can partner together. And Paul, you know, when, when the homeless need a place to shower, I mean, I don't have a shower here. I have a garden hose, but I don't think that's going to be real helpful in January. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the synergy, well, not only between us, but all nonprofits really in Dixon County is amazing. You know, we, you know, in bigger communities, I would guess, or, but everybody's kind of siloed, like we do this and this is our thing. And, uh, you know, we can't, but, you know, if somebody, you know, we've had women come into the Y that have been beaten that are running from their husbands and, and we'll shelter them, you know, kind of, and call women are safe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, We've worked with a help center to, you know, put people up in hotels. We've, you know, sent people to care net. We, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it's, I think that's what makes this community so strong because we're not siloed in our own nonprofits or, right. you know, it really is about the community. There's not turf wars. 
there's not competition. Not, I, not even not even in fundraising. We right. yeah. we sit down and we talk about you know when we're going to do our dinners or or you know our events and and try not to get on top of each other. Right. Uh, so that's really cool. All right, Renee. Last but not least, least was Paul. Yeah. <laughs> He's the baby of the group, yeah. and I'm the middle child. I act like it sometimes because, uh, I'm, anyway. I'm the redheaded stepchild. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my name is Renee Baim. I am the executive director for the Dixon County Help Center. Are you fixing to turn me down because I'm too loud? I'll sit back. You're perfect. Okay. Yeah. You make me a little nervous. <laughs> so, um, I have... Um, been blessed to be serving with the Help Center for right at about 19 years. Um, I'm I'm excited about that because I've had the opportunity of seeing it grow um, over the years. Now, my uh, brother and sister over here, they could just rattle off their stuff. Um, but I'm going to have to read because I had a little pre-Jesus life that has taken away some of my memory cells. <laughs> And uh, so uh, I forget real easy. So, um, but you know, our mission is um, to help provide temporary needs based um, aid to Dixon County residents who find themselves in a time of need. And you know, a lot of times people are like, well, what does that look like? Well, it looks different for everybody. And so there are times where you might need help with clothes or someone might need help with utilities. Someone may be coming out of domestic violence that needs a longer, um, longer opportunity of um, blessings and then, um, you know, natural disasters. And so, um, so I love what I do because of my, my story and um, it makes me very passionate and uh, I just love helping people. And I do love uh, the collaborative network that we have here. Um, You know, we could sit here and think of a bunch of groups that could be with us today on this um, podcast um, because we are so tight knit, and uh, what a blessing! Dixon County is a great place to um, to live, to serve, and um, to just just to be. It really is. You know, back in August uh, at the church here, we hosted a ministry fair, and there were thirty different ministries or nonprofits represented. And every year, I end up with a list afterwards of the seven I forgot. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, or the ones that people couldn't couldn't make it and that's where people don't realize how much good's going on and what's right. so cool when you guys are connected like you are um if i call you renee and you say well, that's i can't really help you with that that's never the end of the conversation it's always but yes. mm-hmm. if you go to the uh dixon community clinic uh, or if you go to uh, paul's house the back door is unlocked and there's a small rock you, <laughs> yes it's locked you know you, you tell me where to go a lot of people tell me where to go, <laughs> but you tell me where to go for help. <laughs> and it's just so cool that you guys interconnect like that. Absolutely. And, you know, he was talking about a lot of the programs that happen that get started around our coffee table, because um, that is one of the blessings that we have here in this community is that um, needs change. Mm-hmm. Things come up that no one is planning on or could even imagine. And in those moments, we brainstorm. We can come up with a plan, and then in in truth, we will look at Paul and say, hey, we're coming to the Y. Mm -hmm. We need this space to do this, this, and he's like, okay, Mm -hmm. and that is such a blessing, and I know I could say that in a joking way because, you know, Paul, uh, in the nonprofit world, there are very few men, and Paul often gets told what to do, and (laughs) He just, uh, he just smiles. Oh, you're allowed to defend yourself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it is what it is. It is what you it know, is. Um, but he, he's got such an open heart and he's in the YMCA is such a beautiful space that if, uh, that if we need space, um, we can call him and, you know, he can usually make that work. And, uh, and it's a blessing because I mean, you know, we do the we do mobile food pantries there. We do um, the big turkey giveaway. And then, you know, we have the huge Christmas store, which started out in the front. And now, and, you know, we're taking a space of his, a valuable space for over a month. And, um, and he's, he's good with that. And uh, because he sees that the good that it turns around and does. And then, you know, Margaret, what can we say? 
I don't know. What can we say? What should we say? (laughs) What should we say? Right, right. But we all work together to make things happen. And that's so I'm glad you brought up space and Paul, Um, not because I want to launch him there, but space is not sexy. You know, if I'm going to put together a fundraising appeal, um, (laughs) it it is really sexy for me to say, feed this little kid, save this baby, uh, take care of this disabled veteran. Um, Like, you know, if I put that on a brochure, I'll get the money immediately. Mm-hmm. But when you say um, air conditioned 10,000 square foot, mm. uh, insure a 300 car parking lot, that's not fun to ask for money for. Right. But what Paul does by supplying the why and what people who support the why do, I mean, you just said you had 100 charities and nonprofits use your space this past year. Yeah. I mean, if you put a dollar value, on what that was, if I had to pay for every meeting I've ever been to. It's hard. Why? Yeah, and you're right. It's very hard to, and I always try to say that when I talk about the why, but it's it's hard to put a price tag or to explain the stories that come out of that, mm-hmm. you know, and so uh, I appreciate you bringing that up. And we were all together, what, last Thursday for Leadership Dixon County. Uh, Renee is over the Community Resource Day. And there are so many individuals that have been exposed to the nonprofits in the area. And Renee does such a phenomenal job. And Allison, with UT Extension, we do a, what do you call it, a mock month of living in poverty. Oh, the poverty simulation. Yes. Yeah. It's good. People do not understand I remember, and I've shared this story, that back in 1994, we got hit with the ice storm here in Tennessee. A lot of people can flash back to that. And here I am needing help and having no clue where to, run, where to go to. I probably could have called the help center and got help with at least formula. <laughs> I needed help. Um, but... I, you know, praise the Lord, I had a mom and a dad that I called and they were able to help with mm-hmm. some things. But I did not, I was not connected. I'm a transplant. We're all transplants yes. of this community. Yes. I are. just married local. Oh, I am too. Um, but we're all from, you know, Nashville is not local. It's not Dixon. It's not Dixon. So you're coming in. We're all transplants. And we remember what it was like when we were first here. And I remember when Paul first came and uh, I think we were doing, was it the community resource day? It was like a community resource day and she yells across the room, hey, Paul, or no, she said, hey, why guy, come over here and let me give you an STD. And I I was like, where have I come to? (laughs) Because that's when you were known as the sex lady. Yes. And, And so she had these little Hershey kisses and when you... They were just in a bucket, and when you reached in and pulled one out, you didn't know what you might get. And so it was a great way to explain to kids, you know, the dangers of sex. But, uh, yeah, that was my introduction to Margaret. Yeah. With, did you get an STD, or did you just get a Hershey kiss? Uh, no, I think I got, like, syphilis or something. <laughs> yeah, you know? or AIDS, I, I think so. But that's just a visual. And that's one thing, I mean, we've always... This is the title of this episode, by the way, The Time Margaret Gave Me an STD. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The Charities of Dixon. <laughs> isn't it great that, you know, there are opportunities. And the, how long ago was that, Paul? When How long have you I mean, been with the Y? I was, I came to Dixon 2011, so it probably would have been 2012 or so. Oh, wow. Yeah. And yeah. then Renee, I don't remember how you and I met. Oh, she I, has a story. I will, I will tell you, we met through David Cole. Oh. David Cole and I went through, um, uh, Dale Carnegie class yes. together yes. and uh, we connected and I always tell him that I'm glad I met him because that's how I met Margaret and so um, she's she's amazing yeah and that's how through him and that class and now I get called Bam Bam <laughs> there. do I want to know <laughs> yes oh In that class, we were learning how to public speak because, you know, I'm shy. I'm an introvert. And so it's real hard for me to. um... It's really hard to believe, but I'm going to trust you. (laughs) 
<laughs> I, I heard a rumble of thunder. <laughs> and so uh, we had to make up a story in this Dale Carnegie class and had to make it visual. And I didn't realize at the time that it was illegal of what I did. So I was, you know, I had to shoot re- uh, woodpeckers because they were tearing up my house. And so I had to act like I was shooting a gun and, and make it. And I went, I said, I looked up at the bird and I went, bam, bam. And the bird looked and I shot it. And so that's why David call, calls me bam, bam. All right. So we have Paul Pitney, the sex lady, the the <laughs> why guy and bam, bam. <laughs> I don't want to know what you, you call me when I'm not around. you clarify that because you said we have Paul Pitney, the sex lady. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Where commas are really important. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Eat, shoots, and leaves. And Renee just that was spat out her coffee. Yes. So, um, well, let, me, let me go uh, a little deep dive on one particular thing. Um, in charity and benevolence work, which we're all involved with to, to some degree, there is always kind of this, there are people who are using the system. Mm-hmm. There's people who don't deserve it. Um, there's people who are scamming you. That's like the line, when you get resistance, you get resistance. Um, But I want people to hear for just a second about how y'all's partnership with each other is one of the things that deals with that, like charity trackers, stuff like that. And I also want people to hear from you about the fact that you know that that happens and that's not always our problem. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. Go Uh, go uh, run with that. Yeah, Yeah. I'll start with that. You know, because the... I guess the YMCA symbol or where we're located, we have all sorts of random people that walk in through our front doors and, you know, that aren't members that, you know, need help or, or ask for help. And some of my first calls are to Renee or Pam and say, do you know this person? Or can you check charity tracker and and find out where they've been or what they've been through? Um, Because there, I mean, there are those people that play the system, but I mean, uh, through these relationships that we have with each other, you know, and in our nonprofit community, we're able to we kind of know who those people are and we still want to help them, right. but it's, it's targeted. We know that, you know, don't give this person cash because they're going to go buy alcohol with it. Or, you know, we can <clears throat> give them food gift cards instead, or, you know, there are different ways to help people. Um, but yeah, definitely working through each other, uh, helps with that. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, that's exactly right. And we do have a strong connection, but I'm going to tell you, we are um, a faith-based organization as well. And uh, back in 2005, uh, which has been a minute, right? <laughs> um, I was preparing at the Help Center to give turkeys away for Thanksgiving. And um Now, coming from my background where I've had to go to food banks to get food and I've had to ask for assistance and I know what it's like to live without utilities and to steal water and to beg for food. I know what it's like. And um, but I also had this part of me that sometimes I have to protect what I have so that I'll have it to give out. Well, so um, back in that time, we were preparing to give turkeys away And I only had about 60 in um, my refrigerators and freezers at that time. And um, so when people came in that Monday, I literally persecuted everyone that walked through that door. Are you sure you need this? Because I was so afraid I was going to run out. So I was like, are you sure you need this? You're not going anywhere. And I really badgered people because my heart was not in the right place. And um but you know what? God is so good. We never ran out of turkeys. Yeah. Never. And we had plenty for the next day, and they just kept coming in. But um, what happened is when I went home that night, um, I got a good whipping mm-hmm. all night long from God um, about how I did not honor him, and I definitely did not uh, glorify him, and I did not look like Jesus to anybody And it broke my heart. So at 5 o'clock Tuesday morning, because I'd been up all night, I couldn't sleep, I came into the help center and um, I hand wrote everyone that came into my office on that Monday an apology letter um, 
and explained that I did not honor God by the way that I talked to them and that I treated them and asked for their forgiveness. And um, from that point on, I decided that's between them and God. Not I, I am not I'm not the gatekeeper on that. You know, I know we have to use wisdom and I know that there are times that we have to, you know, we have Charity Tracker, which is a network that um, that churches throughout the community who are benevolent, community benevolence, um, they can access. And it just helps to keep people accountable and, you know, to cut down on some abuse. But um, as far as like with the turkeys, you know what my thing is, if you need a turkey and you come in and ask, you're going to get it. And that's what we, and every year I let people, I remind people of that because this is what I'm told. Well, y'all gave 1,200 turkeys away. And um, you don't know that all those people needed it. And it's like, okay, well, let's just say 10%. 10% lie. That's 120, right? Sure. And uh, so <laughs> here comes my math. Margaret's was, in charge of the math now. And so... Um, 120 are being dishonest, but that's over what another thousand and you know, 80. 80 the start of the math <laughs> that that truly needed that turkey. Mm -hmm. Is and it worth they, it to lose 120 turkeys to give a thousand eighty away. And here, yes. and at the end of the day, there is nobody mm -hmm. in their right mind that's going to come and stand in line. Well, now we do the drive car uh, or park in line for hours. Mm -hmm for a $15 turkey and about $30 or $40 worth of food. And um, unless they know somebody who needs it. And so that's what I'm holding on to. And, um, you know, we will give until we can't give anymore. And, you know, we also hear this. Well, why would you give a grandmother a 12 or 14, 15 pound turkey? I'm like, well, have you not ever seen an older lady cook? Mm -hmm. she'll be eating on that turkey for uh, a month and so freeze she'll yes, freeze it yes. she'll have turkey sandwich turkey mm -hmm. you know I and so say they don't make four pound ones anymore right <laughs> but so um that is one of the reasons why we are so you know we're not so structured when it comes to the turkey giveaway and the mobile food pantries and, and there the, the other things that we do because it's like I mean, you know, if if you have never had to go and ask for help, you do not know the the humility and the embarrassment and that goes through that. Because I can remember walking into a food bank and, you know, I wasn't sitting here. Hey, look, this is what I'm doing. I mean, it. You know, you had shame and and we don't want people to feel that way. Right. And so, you know, it's not worth increasing the shame mm -mm. to try to save ten percent along the way. Right. Right. And thankfully. I mean, there's always enough. It, it always amazes me. We'll have 300 cars lined up in the parking lot, and we're like, oh, I don't know if we're going to have enough food for this mobile food pantry. And it always seems like the food runs out when the last car runs through. Right. Mm -hmm. And isn't that just how God likes to work? I yes. Mean, the loaves and the fishes, the the oil and the flour with Elijah, Elisha, Elijah, one of those old dead guys. You know, all of these stories where God, God needs us to trust him. Uh, mm -hmm. We want to see it all on the shelf and know that it's going to work, but he gives it, ju give us this day our daily bread, you know, uh, here's your 300th turkey, here's your 300th car comes through. Yeah. You know, the, the Christmas store. I mean, oh, every year that's amazes me how, uh, you know, oh, we're going to give away 300 bicycles. Well, where are those coming from? You know, and, and, and Walmart doesn't have 300 in stock. No. And so it. It's amazing. I mean, I'm amazed every time. And to see the moms, you know, that are crying when they yes. pick out their, you know, five-year-old's first, you know, training wheel bicycle or, you know, and they can choose between Paw Patrol or, you know, whatever. And, and I mean, yeah, it's. Well, and you think about a bicycle and I'm looking at you, Paul, to answer this, um, because here's here's one of the things that's a bicycle. And um but if you have three kids and you're already on a tight income, Paul, what did you typically spend on a bicycle? I mean, we were spending $150, $200 on a bicycle. Like, and, not not like, an, but like a super, like, brand name, like, I mean. A Walmart bicycle. A Walmart yes. bicycle mm -hmm. costs 150 to $200 today. Can you imagine today? what the Christmas costs are going to be this year? Mm. And, and I love that. 
It is the moms and the dads and the grandmoms that are going through and they are picking. It's not no, not knock an angel tree at all. I think that is such a beautiful organization. But you don't know that child. You don't know their favorite color. They're this, they're that. And I remember when Paul and I last year, we had such a fun time. Renee gave us a blank check. Oops. <laughs> and we got to shop for the teenagers. Oh, my goodness. Paul was like a little kid going through Walmart. But was it not? We had, what, 10 carts. Mm. And you yep. called those the wow gifts or something like yes. that. Didn't you? Yes. You wanted the kids to have the gift. Right. I mean, just like when you were a kid, you know, you got one big wow gift and you got a couple of, you know, three or four little gifts. Yeah. And, and so, and then stocking stuffers. And I mean, that's what we try to supply the families that come through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and I just want to point out that uh, that goes to show you the collaboration and the trust that we have um, within our within each other and our organizations. Because, you know, for me to hand over a signed blank check, trusting them. To the CEOs of two other organizations. Right. And, which in a town like Nashville would have been viewed as the competition. Right. And, you know, and some people could say some pretty negative things about that. But you know what? Our whole goal was to serve our community. Yes. And it wasn't the first time because they got several checks. <laughs> because and that's the beauty of the community, because people kept bringing in money. And mm -hmm. and so we were able to send them out, um, you know, because Paul, it works great because you got the van. And so they load the van up. And, um, and it's a great collaboration with the police department, the sheriff's department. And uh, yeah, we have Rotary that comes out. Mm -hmm. What other groups do we have? Lots of churches. Lots of churches. Uh, the Dixon Women's Club come out and schools, Dixon Medical Associates, um, Morrison and Rye, they are coming out this A lot year. of your banks a come lot out of the banks, um, And they do it as a, an opportunity to give back. Um, and it gives them a hands-on because we don't allow any children. Um, it has to just be the adults. Because we wanted to make sure that the parents could take the gifts home. And it could be from them. It, you did a wrapping station, too. Didn't you? Yeah, yes. The uh, Jessica, Lieutenant Jessica Blackwell with uh, the Dixon City Police Department, she kind of coordinates that. Um, and so, yes, we have a wrapping station. And I have been quite amazed at um, the SWAT team. I think that's what they're called. Um, and the police officers who have a knack. For wrapping. Yes. Oh, they're used to tying people up. Packages aren't even. <laughs> I, 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 that is a really, I mean, they really get into it. And, and they so. wrapped them in zip ties. And, and, you know. <laughs> but that is something where collaboration, again, this is not just the Dixon County Help Center doing it. It is Dixon County. That's right. Doing it. And, and for Dixon County people, right. all people, like we even have. Uh, interpreters come yes. in for for our Hispanic community. And That's so been really precious. Sonrisa has yes. helped with that, and in your staff, you had a couple mm -hmm. young men that were able to help. And that's been um, really nice, too. And we also work with the Child Advocacy Center. And so um, with them, they have several counties that they serve, but their families that they serve can come in um, to get uh, pick out Christmas for their children. Um, but that with the Hispanic community, because um, in that population, they have such a negative view of law enforcement. And so when they come in and the police officers are taking them through and just the 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 you know, it's just it's just really nice. Yes. Building bridges, man. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, mm -hmm. there's an unfortunate reality. There is still a lot of prejudice in the world, and there's still a lot of discrimination places in Dixon, mm -hmm. but not here. No, I know. Uh, I'm not sure if Margaret um, and Paul have this issue, but when there's times when we want to apply for grants, we can't apply because we do not um, keep the demographics right. of um, the color, race, and we do not uh, ask if if they're LGBT. I that that does not that is not a determining factor whether or not we're going to help you the color of your skin or how you choose to live your life 
it that's that doesn't make a yes or no. So we don't ask those questions, and so because we don't, there's people, who won't give you money. There's people right. that will not give us money, and um, it it is, and yeah, I, and I point that out because there's a lot of grants that we cannot apply for because. That's not an important question in my eyes as the right. leader of this organization to ask people. It don't matter. Thanks. Yeah, we, we we didn't get a grant, and they wanted us to list everybody out. And I was like, well, in our mission statement, it says for all. Right. That, that, that means all. A-L-L. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I do get... you have to do that? We don't receive government funding. So that is something that we do have some foundations that cover us. The majority of our ongoing donations are um, churches, individuals, businesses. A lot of our um, support comes from people that have a story, you know, and I know we're, we're talking about the collaboration. One thing I always, when I go and I speak anywhere, definitely in a church, I speak to the man and the woman that may have had an abortion in their past because that is something that we as a community, we as a faith community, individuals that have that in their past will not talk about it. And a lot of times it's because, and Matthew and I, we've talked about this, it's how it's been um, preached on. It's how it's been when you're in a small group and your people don't know your past. They don't know where you, what you've been through, and the verbiage that we as a faith community uses is heart wrenching. On sometimes, if the only thing they've ever heard me say is that you're a murderer, if you've mm -hmm. done this, it's going to be awfully hard for me to get you to a place where you're willing to accept grace. Right. You know. Right. So that's where I know that. Paul knows our mission, our vision, and he's he can speak on behalf of CareNet. I trust him. Renee can speak on behalf of CareNet. I trust her and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And we've done that. Yeah. Where we want to make sure that we are sharing each other's mission too. And and I love that we are a part of the community. This is a community effort. This is a community collaboration. And the community is also the church community and the non-church community. We want to be a light to those that may not see Jesus in that person that says they are a Christian. Yeah. And yeah. this is a hard conversation to have. I'm and and sure I'm a late so. bloomer. I did not, there's a lot of BC in my life. There's a lot of before Christ. And I did not become a believer till I was 28. And so I have such a heart for those that have been wounded. And I know uh, Renee does too. And such a heart for the uh, preacher's wife, pastor's wife, and just loving on them well too. I don't know where this conversation came from. or Nobody knows either. It's I don't know. Okay. But I just think it's so important that we, yes, Dixon County is a tight-knit community. We're a tight-knit faith community. But Dixon's changing. It is. And, you know, and one of the things that I want to follow up with you, Margaret, is um, what Margaret does through CareNet, the confidentiality is so mm -hmm. tight. Yes. And um, but because Margaret knows about the services and her staff know about the other services, they can inform. Mm -hmm. You know, she can't sit here and say, well, we sit and, you know, send. Would you believe who got knocked up? Uh, right, yeah. right. And uh, but Margaret can say, hey, if you go over to the help center, they can help you with this mm -hmm. um, or go to the Y. Let the Y give you a scholarship. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Paul won't know that unless no. they say or we won't know. Um, but again, so I wanted to make sure I said that because um, what Margaret does and what CareNet does in the community is so important, especially coming from um, my my having a child at 16 and second by 18, I'd have loved to have had a care net. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, you know, it's important that people realize that the confidentiality that goes there, because we never know who would come from care net. So right. yeah. 
you don't we don't want anybody to to think oh it's a small town they're they're talking yeah. yeah yeah well and i think uh, i'm just amazed at how they love on people mm-hmm. i mean the her staff is amazing mm-hmm. and the way that they care for people and love on them and and pray for them individually yes. like the the people that come through their doors is amazing it is and so yeah i know you know and cuz you were talking about people not uh you know people might not go through the doors of a church or may not come to that like that's one benefit about the Y mm-hmm. is that people come through the doors of a Y that may never come through the doors of a church right and or or may need help need, may need to go to CareNet or the help center and mm-hmm. I know like we've sent people to CareNet yeah. and and the help centers brought us stuff that people would not come to the to the help center but they just made a drop like hey here's some food and mm-hmm. some clothes for this person so and we also we work uh, very closely like with workforce essentials where if someone's going to have going for an interview they come to carenet and they get in our our store they get a interviewing outfit at no cost yes. we've worked with the children's services where uh, a young teenager was removed from the home she didn't have anything so we were able to get her a complete five day shoes, um, coat, whatever. So when she started school at the beginning in January, she was fully outfitted for the entire week where she did, and her clothes were not in a garbage bag. And they're, they're nice clothes you yes, have over there. We are, I always, yes. I always laugh when you show up and you're like, Hey, you like my outfit? And, and we're like, you know, it doesn't look different than it. I'm like, yeah, it's nice. Yep. I got it out of Loretta's. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. 25 cents. <laughs> great clothes. But, you know, one of the other things, too, um, is during times of natural disasters. Yes. Oh, um, my gosh, yes. Yes. Paul gets the call. Uh, boy, that rhymed, didn't it? Paul gets the call. Better call Paul. Uh, <laughs> to um, Like a TV show. <laughs> to open up the Y as a disaster um headquarters and so you know from things as you know as tragic as the fires that happened on spring street um uh, to the floods tornadoes the waverly floods yes they took over the y for six months yeah and um but paul if he hears a, a need we have access margaret and i have access to our thrift stores oh, to yes. grab out whatever is needed. And when we do that, um, we do that to make sure people are taken care of. Yeah. And it's, it's not a, like, it's not a, uh, a thing where you have to like, Oh, do I need to bother Renee or do I need to bother Margaret? Or like, there's no question like, right. like speed dial, like, Hey, I need this. Or, you know, and likewise I get calls all the, you know, Hey, can you provide this? And mm-hmm. and we just like and I think the the strength of the relationships and the partnering in everyday time just strengthens those times in emergency. You know, when there is a natural disaster, when there is um COVID. Yeah, a pandemic. I mean, uh I the way we all work together mm-hmm. and um for the community was amazing. There and I also love that we are all in nonprofits that are non-denominational. So I have, oh my goodness, how many pastors and preachers do I have in my phone that I can't, we have that relationship with them mm-hmm. and we have that church foundation too. Now, now is every church involved in our ministries? No. But there is a huge collaboration within the church community, too. Yeah. From big churches to, yes. like, little tiny churches. Yes. And now Margaret's going to name the names of the ones that should be involved that aren't. Oh, I could. And for twenty five ninety nine, you can have your <laughs> name edited from this part of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great fundraiser. The wall of shame. Yeah. The, the church no, wall. No, absolutely. We would have been on it too long. Well, yeah. and churches have changed on how we... Uh, communicate with our congregations 
where it's very difficult. There's not much screen time. And I just took and uh, compiled the most accurate list of all the churches in yeah. Dixon County. It's and changed. Guess, and I will be sharing that with my my fellow nonprofits Thank because, you, you know, uh, so we can bombard the church. <laughs> good. <laughs> I mean, we need to, you know, there's a, there's a ministry fellowship and it, it has some good about it. There's also some other kind of uh, organic uh, connections between those churches. But mm-hmm. that's a thing that need, we, I, mm-hmm. need to do better. We, we've got to talk with each other, not about each other. We've Correct. got to be, you know, able to share those resources. My list is a hundred and a little over 150 churches in Dixon County alone. Mm-hmm. At one point in our history, there were 33 churches of Christ in this county. I can understand that. Uh, I can see that, too, especially since I live out in the most rural parts. And you, of... you pass these little ones that have been there for 100 years. Yes. And, you know, in the era of horse and buggy, it made sense. Yes. Uh, but there's an awful lot of these places that there's 12 people mm-hmm. and the average age is 112. And I'm not be, I am not throwing shade at small churches or right. old churches because God, Jesus did great stuff with 12. Mm-hmm. Yes, so, absolutely. 100 percent. But. There are some that are dying because God is sparing lost people from those churches. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's probably a little too harsh, but it's true. Yeah. And I love that. I know that, Matthew, you have a lot of people from all walks of life listening to this podcast. If you want the three of us to come and talk. There you go. There's the pitch. Yes. We would love to uh, do a panel with us. Uh, you know, have your congregation come and really learn about how they can put their faith into action and it not just inside the church. Mm-hmm. You, uh, we as a community, and it's happening, you got to get outside of the four walls of the church. Matthew is discipling you to go. This is the huddle. Not to this stay. Not to play. Correct. Leave the huddle. You yeah. have to leave the huddle. One of it's the stories good. I like most is that Christians are kind of like manure. You put them in a giant pile. All they do is generate heat and stink, but you spread them out. They change the world. And I, I don't know who I stole that from. There's your title for the yeah. business. You are yes. like manure. You know? Well, you know, and- That's a crappy illustration. Oh, <laughs> I got a while to get that. With that. Yeah. You know, this past week I had, um, as Margaret had said, the opportunity to talk with Leadership Dixon County, and there was 21 in their class. And um, one of the things that uh, God has given me an opportunity to discuss is it is so easy to judge and criticize people who look different than you, who live differently than you. And a lot of times people will look down on people um, because they think that they're not financially stable. And uh, well, what I did is, and I want to challenge those that are listening, to take and put together a simplified household budget. Y'all's Facebook post about this. Well, yeah. that and um, And then I took and... Gave each person, you know, I said, do we talked about rent, utilities, um, you know, a simple car note, simple things. And I want you to see how far $15 an hour at 40 hours a week goes in a month. I did $15, $20, $25 an hour and $30 an hour. Um, and I, and I challenged them to see if they could make that work in a month and in a household of four with one working spouse because daycare, you know, we were going to, I made it simple on them because daycare for one lady, um, for one child, she pays $600 a month. Oh my word. And that's Dixon. (laughs) And that's Dixon. And I had looked up what the rent was um, here in Dixon the other day. And I found a three bedroom, one bath, 956 square foot condo, not condo, duplex, and it was fifteen hundred and fifty dollars a month. That's more than my house payment yeah. here in Dixon. Here in Dixon, and you can't get a house with three bedrooms for less than thirteen hundred ever anymore. And so I and when I did that, those those groups of people they struggled. Yeah, and they were stressed out about how they could not. And so 
you think about the need for all of our community resources and our nonprofits. Well, imagine an emergency comes in. The lady, the mom finds out, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. And, you know, and so she has to go to CareNet. CareNet's not going to cost her anything to go to CareNet. And, you know, um, mom may be at home with two kids all day and, and she's stressed because being a, you know, stay at home mom is, but it's like we can say, hey, I know your finances are tough. Go to the Y and talk to Paul or one of his team members and they can scholarship you in and you can go and work out or take some time for yourself doing yoga or whatever. And your kids can be in Y play and it won't cost you any money. And this and, may be the thing that safeguards your mental health. So yes. You shake these kids. Yes. Like, yeah. This matters. Yes. And that there are there are so many nonprofits and resources here that are specifically for folks who no other way they cannot afford it. And that's why it's so important. And it's important not to judge these people. Amen. You know, one thing I hear people judge a lot on is, well, if they were so poor, how do they have this 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 cell phone? Mm. And okay, I get there are some people who've made some bad choices there. But I challenge you to try to navigate the school system, finding a job and health care with the about without the ability to scan a QR code and fill out a form on your phone. Yes. Yeah. You can't go to Taco Bell without doing it. And, you know, <laughs> and and I understand because sometimes people say, well, I went in their house and they have a bigger screen TV than I have or um, they drive a nicer car. Well, a lot of times you can get really nice furniture, really inexpensive at rent center or somewhere like that. And so you will talk yourself into that, um, not realizing the long term effect. Which is really bad. Uh, right. And. You know, I can remember being, oh, my gosh, super, super poor, getting my income tax. And just because I never had anything nice, I would run and buy that big screen TV or buy that new phone because I just wanted to have mm-hmm. something nice. It was a bad choice. But once you've made it, you've made it. It's yeah. not, okay, are they going to go sell that on Facebook Marketplace? No. And so, you know, yeah. you know, sometimes... People make bad choices, you know, just bad to... choices don't make bad people. They right. don't. They sure. don't. And so, you know, and I tell people all the time, don't judge somebody by the car that they drive. I mean, I, I've had some nice vehicles, and I've had them repossessed. They auction them off, and then I'm responsible for what's left. Mm-hmm. And so I might as well have kept the car because i got to have a car to get to my job. I made a bad choice. But at the time, I could get in the car 0% down, you know, and it was, you know, whatever. And I, later on, it come back to bite me in the butt. And so... Because a lot of times when you're in that situation, you're living minute by minute. Yes. You're not looking uh, not 30, 30 days down the road and, oh, wow, I just spent my rent money. Right. Type of thing. A lot of times you're just day by day saying, how can I survive today that's right i get my check on friday yes what do i do on thursday yeah mm-hmm. but who knows i might be going to the y and working out and the lady right next to me may be someone who can offer me relief mm-hmm. may be able to offer me help mm-hmm. you know go to care net you know how they're going to give me diapers yeah and if i need some stuff for my children um yeah no I'm telling you, it's wonderful the amount of resources we have. And I don't care how bad of a decision you've made. Your kid deserves to have diapers on his butt. Right. You know, end, period, end of sentence. Mm-hmm. That's, just, that's just it. Okay, let's do one or two more things before we wrap up. Do you have a story? Yeah. No. The last few years, your career, last week, tomorrow, of one of the things God has shown up, God has done, God has winked. Maybe he's winked. Maybe he's screamed. I don't know. But something that you've seen in the work that you've done. Do you have a story you can share? I have one. Um, when I first started at CareNet, there was a young lady that we walked through the um, adoption process. And through a situation, she ended up not adopting or not placing her child for adoption, but parenting. And... I was at a function, fast forward 17 years later, I saw her, I knew her, confidentiality, I'm not going to run up to her. She 
after seeing me two or three times, came up to me just crying, saying, do you remember me? I was like, absolutely. And I said her by name. She gave me a big hug and she said, let me tell you what I'm doing with my life now. And let me tell you how much of an impact CareNet made on my life to the point where a year later, I get a graduation invitation for her daughter. How cool. How and cool. that is, to, you never know the impact because I hadn't seen her for 17 years and we were at a volunteering a serve, serving Saturday for Cross Point. I wasn't even going to Cross Point at that time. I was uh, volunteering as a community uh, partner. And for that, you never know the impact that you make on someone's life. And it is for the long haul. And that one that I still have that graduation picture underneath my calendar at, at CareNet. So I want to I want to remember that, you know, at that point we thought, man, she's going to struggle. Yeah. But the Lord had other plans and she's thriving. I remember the first baptism I went to in the jail ministry. And this guy was, I mean, he had to have been six, eight. I mean, he was, he was a beefy, long, tall, stone-faced dude. And I, it, I remember thinking, how is he going to fit at the baptistry? Mm-hmm. Was really what I thought. So, how are we going to like put him in sideways? Like, you know, how is this going to work? But I remember noticing the way he walked in, and he walked with kind of a a disinterested swagger. And I remember just immediately thinking, he's here for a bath. He's here to get out of his cell for a little while because that is a thing that happens. Okay, he's here because he thinks this is going to impress his baby mama or the parole officer or whatever. And I watched Tom baptize him. And when he came out of the water, there were bubbles in the water because he started sobbing the moment he hit the water. Uh, Just broke me. And I thought, God, you are trying to tell me something about what a judgmental jerk I am. Um, I will never judge another person's baptism again. You know, that's not to say there aren't moments you have questions. Mm -hmm. But every moment I have those questions, I, I picture this man's face and I think, God, who am I to judge another man's servant? Right. This is, this is your business, not mine. That was one of those those God moments for me. Paul? Yeah, I, you know, um, so I finished my master's this last summer, and one of the classes we talked about moments of awe and how it uh, affects our resiliency about the how many moments of awe we experience. And and moments of awe would be like, you know, that sunset or you step outside and feel the warmth of the sun on you and you hear the birds. Or, you know, if you're on a mountaintop and you look out and see the landscape, you know, those moments of awe. And I, for me, that's what the stories are that uh, that we experience. It's when I have those moments of awe and it's like, like the guy coming out of the baptismal, you know, you're like, wow. And you just see what's going on. Um, so, um, so at the Y, uh, we provide free showers and, um, and last year we did like 1400 showers over the year. And it was, uh, and it was this one elderly gentleman that, uh, I was just walking through the bathroom, kind of picking up. And then, you know, I go back out and, and he, uh, he stopped me on the way out and he's like, I don't know if you know that when you're living in your car, how good it feels to take a shower. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, you know, it wasn't until a little bit later, I was like, yeah, who, who doesn't like to take a shower after a long day? Mm-hmm. You know, and so. Yeah, like those little moments of awe when God, like, you know, it's an angel kiss, kind of like, you know, you kind of like, oh, yeah, that's true. You know, or like, you know, earlier when we were talking about them, the mom crying, picking out a bicycle, you know, um, I think that's what we all kind of do what we do. And Paul, I, I know you didn't do this, but I'm going to just, I'm going to be the, the plea here. Okay. It is so easy 
for me to ask for money for the kid's Christmas store to buy that bicycle because that emotional payoff. But the monthly support that pays the gas bill for there to be hot water, mm. that's what enabled that moment of awe. Right. Um, and one of the things I'm trying to get more intentional about in my life is trying to figure out how I want to support good things, not just things that are sparkly. I mean, sparkly's fun. You love that. But volunteering with the jail, volunteering with Kiernet, my interactions with all of you guys, the thing that keeps us going are those people who say, here are $25 a month every month right. come hell or high water. Yeah. And maybe if you're lucky, there's an extra 50 at Christmas. But that that $100 a month that is that is paying the phone bill right. because somebody – that's not fun to ask for. Like, mm -hmm. If you ask me to stand up in front of a room and ask for a bicycle for a three-year-old, all I got to do is show you a picture, and I will get a bicycle from every person in that room because, you know. But when you when you talk about just to keep the lights on stuff, that's – Yeah, and it makes such a difference. funding is needed desperately. Yeah. And like you said, it's those monthly reoccurring donors. We all have websites. We all have Donate Now. And I'm sure that we all have that um, reoccurring and put in your credit card. We don't have to do anything. Yeah. It's wonderful. It just goes into the bank. And every minute that the three of you don't have to spend thinking about fundraising yes. is a minute you can spend doing your ministry. Yes. Yes. People don't appreciate Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I learned two things from mm -hmm. Andy Stanley. When I preach about giving, I do believe God blesses people who are generous, and I believe that giving is fun. We like doing yes. it. Um, somehow we've been convinced that it's not when we have to pull out our credit card for an organization, but it's really fun. It is. Um, so what I tell people is if you want to test it and you think that I'm a scammer, you know, you think that I'm just asking you to give so that my salary gets paid, that never quits being awkward for me, by the way. It is super weird to me mm -hmm. that I get paid because people put money in the contribution basket. I hate everything about that. I just don't know any other way to do it right now. I haven't won the lottery yet. Mm -hmm. you know. Um, but if you doubt my motivations when I ask you to try generosity, give somewhere else. Don't give to Burns. Give give to Paul or, or give to Habitat or give, to, give somewhere, mm -hmm. and you will see that the reality of this. Um, I, I just think that lesson is so important. The other thing that I learned from this Andy Stanley sermon, and I wish I could remember the title because I've gone back to look for it a few times. Um, he said in there that if you, we we really like random acts of kindness. Again, they're fun, they're sexy. Pay it forward, which just does nothing but annoy the people who are working at the drive through Really, you know, uh, random acts of kindness aren't as helpful as intentional acts of generosity. Um, yeah. and, I'm going to write that down. Say that again. I, I don't think I got the quote quite right, but random acts of kindness are not as important, impactful, as intentional, repeated acts of generosity. Mm. Um, when I take $20 a month and support CareNet, that does something every month. Mm -hmm. I don't always get the high from it that I do from, from the bicycle, but it does something. And that, and this is the part that I liked, because I have always felt guilty when you drive up by the interstate that there's a guy who's looking at you. Mm -hmm. and he's got the cardboard sign and you've got to decide, what am I going to do? Or you go, every every restaurant in the world now asks you if you want to give a dollar to whatever they've got. Right. And when you say no, you feel like a creep. Um, but what Stanley said in that sermon, he said, if you are practicing intentional, continuous generosity, you don't have to feel guilty when you're not sure if this is the right opportunity or not because you're practicing generosity. Mm -hmm. You're doing it on purpose. Well, that's really cool. So guess what? When when they ask me at Wendy's to round up, I say, no, thank you. And I don't feel bad about it anymore because there's other places I practice and I know where that goes. I don't do it to Wendy's because I don't know. It. And maybe there's just great. I don't know. You know, I, I'm just naming that. Okay. Renee? Well, you know, and, and out of all of us, Paul probably has the hardest ask to do. And, you know, and that's why um, my husband and I have continued to have our monthly membership there and we have for years i don't yeah way back in the beginning i i think and um because i see and we don't go to the gym i've tried working out i'm just not a workout person um but i see all the good that it does in our community so my monthly membership 
goes for the operational. And I, I do not have a problem doing our and continuing our monthly. Um, even when we had to make some cutbacks here a couple of years ago, it's like we're not going to cut the why because we see what it goes to. And um, and then, you know, another beautiful thing is that when Mike's had to work from home or work from he can go to the Y and just sit in one of the rooms and have amazing internet service. Right. And so, you know, that has come in handy over the years as well. But, um, you know, there's, there's many reasons why supporting the Y is so important. And I know that it's not what you call, you know, sexy or attractive, but uh, it's such a needed ministry. And I will always tell people that it's way more than a gym. And the gym part is just a small, small aspect of what yeah. the YMCA does um, you, our local yeah but that voice. sexy issue I, I've used Paul for my examples but that's true look, sexy Paul wow they're gonna have to edit that out you know uh but thank you true. for that too <laughs> <laughs> you liked that a little too much there buddy you know? um <laughs> each of our organizations has the same issue um mm-hmm. it is not fun when Karen writes the bill for insurance mm-hmm. which is sky high since we do medical adjacent things it's we not have, fun. what, five policies that we have to maintain? Yeah. And, and you know, all of these professional affiliations and the, the conferences aren't cheap. And we need, you know, that stuff is not as much fun to fundraise. Um, um, no. We all have it in our organizations. You guys, I mean, your we, liability stuff has to be through the roof. Well, and that's true with the Help Center because um, everybody wants to give for a cause. You know, oh, this goes to the food bank and this. But we do have some amazing donors who say, hey, you put it where it needs yes. to go. Unrestricted, you know, unrestricted is a good yes. word. Funds are, um, are the best because then that way, you know, um, if we, we need a new air conditioning, a heating and air conditioning unit, um, that's going to be a hard ask, right? And um, But... If people are donating uh, with no restrictions, then I can pull from that. It's ready. It's it, just there. It's there. And so, um, you know, we're just blessed. Yeah. We're blessed. And, you know, we've got a lot going on um, here in the community over the next couple of months. This is the given season. So, you know, what starts in this season would be a blessing if it continued all year long. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so in your heart, while you're thinking about who to give to, you um, you know, just remember the organizations um, that are local. Mm-hmm. It's easy to give to great big organizations, but you know what? Us small organizations, we have some really strict com- uh, accountability. Um, and if you want to see an organization's accountability and they won't show it, then don't give it. Don't give to them. Um, but yeah, we're all audited and reviewed here at this table. Yes. So. And, you know, uh, I'm proud of that. You know, because even at the help center, we've been questioned, you know, it's come across, well, what are y'all doing? You know, and people make false accusations and it's like, hey, here's our books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look. I'm the highest paid staff member there. And you should be. And I, you know what? Um, and you're not paid enough. Right. I don't know what you get paid, but I know it's not enough because I know what you deal with. <laughs> you know? But, you know, we do it for the heart. We do it for what we're doing in our community. And And I'll just expand on that, you know. Uh, none of us would be able to do what we do without our stats. Right. We we all have some pretty amazing people that work with us. And, you know, the why doesn't run by me. It runs right. by every teenager that works at the front desk that, you know, has contact with the public and, and our, our morning staff and the people that get up at, you know, 4.30 a.m. to open the why up, um, you know, the... The people that stay late, that come in on weekends, yeah. you know. People who clean. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wash the towels. Absolutely. You know. Uh, Volunteers. Mm, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, none of that happens without our volunteers and our hardworking staff. Well, you so. know, here we're fixing to hit the cold season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The and stations. the warming station, you know, that's like a call that quick. And so there's a lot going on. So, but anyway. Well, we recorded this in middle of November, and I'm not sure when this episode comes out, actually. But, you know, my hope was that we would be able to say, this is the holiday season. Mm -hmm. Here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. And yeah, everybody and their brother asks for money on Giving Tuesday. Um, And we also ask for prayer and we ask for volunteers. Um, But getting on board, man, it just makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Did you get to tell your God story yet? No. Oh. <laughs> Were you well, trying to dodge that? Oh, uh, well, you know, because I was sitting here thinking, which one? You know. Um, That's hard know, to put you on the spot it, like that. It, yeah. it is. Because um, we could talk. Uh, I mean, there are tons of stories. There are tons of stories. And, you know, one that I was thinking about is um, something that we don't typically publicize is um, sometimes we have to go in and help people remodel their homes. And um, that's a huge expense. And we had a, a guy come to us and say, you know, I, it's getting hard for me to help my wife get a shower um, because I have to help her. And if we could have a handicapped bathroom put in, um, then she could shower by herself. And, you know, and, okay, well, that was an easy ask. And so I do that. Um, we started the paperwork and we got it done. I never met her. I never met her. And I only worked with him. And our contractors only worked with him. But about two years after all of that was done, I remember walking um, through the thrift store. And she looked at me and she said, Miss Renee, I said, yeah. And she gives me the biggest hug and said to me, you have no idea what the Help Center has done for me. For 17 years, I've had to have help taking a shower. And now I can take a shower all by myself with no help. And that just restored so much dignity into me, my world. And, you know, things that we take for granted and, you know, um, the Patsy and Martha story, you oh, know, yeah. the mother and daughter who on Maple Valley Road would walk to Dixon. You know, that that's going to be a forever God story there, right? No one organization or church, because they were members of a small church, I think the Sylvia Church of Christ is out that way, and um, small church and... They, uh, they, uh, they couldn't do it because they're a small church. Um, a couple of people that were picking them up couldn't do it because they didn't have the funds, but their home was falling apart. It was awful. And, um, their story was tragic. And so, but together we were, we were able to raise enough money because we were looking at buying them a small trailer and putting it on a piece of property, but we were able to build them a two-bedroom, two-bath, beautiful home right here in downtown Dixon because of the generosity. And every day that I see them out walking around uh, downtown Dixon just does my heart so good because it's like they have that freedom. They can go to the dollar store right down the road. They can go to Walmart. And so, you know, that wouldn't have been possible without God and this community coming together like it did. I never would have expected that the theme of this episode would be how important a shower is. Yes. <laughs> because oh. that was Paul's story. That was Renee's story. Uh, Margaret, you want to come up with one real quick? You do baby showers. We do. That counts. We, okay. we do. I love that. And three for three on that, yeah. I guess. And one thing, and Renee taught me this um, statement, we're not giving a hand out. We're giving a hand up. You handed up. That beautiful mom and daughter in Charlotte, and you gave them a hand up for being able to be in the city of Dixon, which is incredible. It is. And now you know, they can walk safely. Now yes. they can. And they have a home that's safe to take showers. Correct. That's electricity, um, the wires. Oh, Lord, it was very scary where they was yes. living. And with like with CareNet, with going through our classes, every class that a mom and dad takes they're earning the voucher to shop in the store yeah so it's, it's not a handout no it's given them that yeah. independence and we were able to share just a small collective at our banquet two weeks ago of the impact that was made on these moms these families these moms and dads and collectively five families were able to earn over $7,000 of items that they could shop in the store for. I mean, that's awesome impactful. That. Yeah. And that was not, that was from the um, amazing in-kind donations that we received from the community. How cool. Well, we've been doing this a while, so we should probably wrap up. But is there anything else that you're just wishing you'd gotten a chance to share? 
Well, I would like to hear maybe Matthew given a charge, not a charge, but the churches that may not know about the services that the Y, the Help Center, CareNet, the other organizations, what would you say, like you're having a, a meeting, uh, well, you do meetings on the um, the first Tuesday, the second Tuesday? Look, I'm like Paul. Somebody else has to show me my calendar <laughs> before. I... <laughs> okay, so if you're with a group of pastors, preachers right now, what would be your charge to get them involved or what would you do? What they would you just need to get to know you guys because if they do that, eventually y'all are going to worm your ways into their budgets and, you know, I mean, tell them to watch their wallets. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you know. no, but seriously, if, if one like of the, the best... list that Renee's doing, of, I mean, we yeah. did that at CareNet, Brittany, my director of development. And, yeah. You know, it, one of the things that um, we get so much mail at church from so many things wanting us to do so much. And some of it's crazy and some of it's local and some of it's foreign and some of the thing. Um, sorry, I'm really doing a bad job with this answer. If I want somebody to grow spiritually, one of the best things I can do is send them on a mission trip. That is maybe the best investment because I give them a new perspective. Mm -hmm. I make them live in community with other Christians for a week or two. I make them realize it's like the best money I can spend. What people in churches don't realize is I don't have to spend a thousand dollars in airfare to do that. If I send them to the help center for a week, yes, I can get really close to that. Um, so, I mean, I, our church needs to do better uh, about spending money on these things that are right in front of us. And we're not the only one. Um, and churches have their weird reasons and weird histories. You know, some churches have been uh, there was a line that I heard in my training that we didn't support these organizations because that was outsourcing the work of the church to something that wasn't the church. That was actually an argument that got made. And uh, I can appreciate the spirit of that because I want my people to be doing good, not just handing Renee money for her people to do good. Like, I don't need to outsource love. But that's not what the Help Center does. The Help Center does it better. <laughs> <laughs> is there consistently and the help center is glad for us to partner and work together so that it's not just us trying to pay away a good thing it's it's us doing a better thing mm -hmm. you are better at this than i am a thousand times because you do it every day I, i'll confess to you i hate benevolence requests at church um you know when it's one of our members who's having a hard time that's not hard for me because we know them and it's right. usually a pretty obvious answer and if it's a painful no the painful no reasons are obvious. Um, but when it's the someone who walks off the street in Christmas, uh, what do I do? Especially when it's the person who's done it every Christmas for the last 30 years. I love knowing that I can call Renee mm -hmm. and she's going to make a good decision. Right. And that she's going to do it with generosity and grace. And if she says no, it's going to be a good reason to say no. If she says yes... I'm going to be happy with that. Yes. I, like I, churches need to be involved with you guys. Mm -hmm. CareNet can reach women that I can't. Right. Um, there's not a lot of young ladies who are going to walk up to me and say, my period's three weeks late. I might be pregnant. Right. You know, that's, that's not a conversation most people are ever going to be willing to have. But if you have the conversation saying, you know what, if you find yourself in that, this situation, there is Martha's in the church. Absolutely. That and legitimately yeah, Martha. Her name was Martha. <laughs> <laughs> so Ed, Ed Burns, which which I appreciate, is having the people in the church that are ready to walk alongside uh, this individual. And well, your church does that very well. well we I, I, go, I give you props to that, Matthew, for sure. And it may not be the woman. It may be the guy that says, my girlfriend. Correct. Yeah. So, and I just want to point out how much you do for the... the the dads, the yeah. future dads. Yes. One of the first things that got you kind of on my radar, Paul, was when some of our uh, our members who have a lot of kids uh, told me about how they use the Y. Uh, it wasn't for a workout. They have a lot of kids and they were just really struggling. So if the Y was date night. They literally would drive to McDonald's, get themselves Big Macs, take the kids to Y play and sit in the back room and play board games for an hour. 
uh, they said, we felt a little bit like the devil uh, when you walk into the Y while everybody's on the treadmills carrying a sack of Big Macs. <laughs> but, uh, but that was exactly what they needed. And like again, it just, it wasn't on the church. I love the church. The church is beautiful and powerful and wonderful and all those sorts of things. But we're not the, we're not the only one, you know? We need you guys. So I, I just encourage our churches, our members to, to figure out where you fit, what you're passionate about. Uh, I joke that, that you guys are the three easiest ones to have this conversation with because you're saving babies, <laughs> <laughs> saving families. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the jail ministry is tough because I say I'm saving inmates and people aren't quite so sure they're on board with that <laughs> one if you're just to, the honest truth. But mm-hmm. you guys are doing amazing stuff and you're helping others do it. Right. I don't know where to start with helping the homeless. That's a huge, complicated problem. Paula, you and I have talked about the the, the issues that shelters have and the mental health stuff and and all of that. But I know that if I call Renee or I call Kinsman, they're going to know stuff that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to know it. Right. Uh, Anywho. Anything else? We might need to do part one, part two. (laughs) Yeah. We could do this again for sure. No, no, no. I'm like, you you break this in half. (laughs) Because we know coming back. Paul's attention span, uh, span is 20 minutes. You think it's that long? And I'm so glad. Oh. Look at you, Paul. You lasted a very long time. Congratulations, Paul. <laughs> Thank we're, you. We're very <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> Okay, before this goes further off the rails, we need to end this. Friends, thank you for listening, and I hope that you enjoyed listening uh, to Paul Pitney from the Dixon County Family Y, Margaret Cole from CareNet Pregnancy Medical Center in Dixon, uh, from Renee Bain from the Dixon County Help Center. They've all got websites. Google them. Look for it on Facebook. I'll try to tag them in these posts so that you can find out a little bit more about what they've going on because that's where you'll get all the best information. Until next time, I can't wait to hear what God's up to in your story. Thanks for listening to Rough Drafts. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. While you're at it, help us spread the word by leaving a rating and review. Until next time, let's keep looking for how God writes His love into our stories.